Hello, testing. Right, so uh, up on the screen here, we've got a bunch of uh, buzzwords that are pretty meaningless, uh, <laughs> but are really good for getting a talk uh, accepted <laughs> into a uh, summit. Uh, so what we really uh, wanted to talk about is that I have a cloud, now what kind of scenario? You know, you've invested in getting OpenStack, and now you're trying to work out what you want to do with it. Uh, and we thought, you know, a good way to demonstrate it would be to build out a uh, sort of a, a, a PaaS slash uh, development pipeline that we can show doing like a full CI slash CD, um, continuous integration, continuous deployment workflow, uh, you know, showing a kind of, I guess, cl cloud native way to do things. Uh, and we, we're doing it by, we've taken OpenStack, obviously, and a bunch of other services uh, laid on top of it to, to build this out. And we'll, we'll talk about that as we go through. And we will have uh, some demo involved in this, some live demo, so hopefully the demo gods are kind to us. Uh, so one of the things we want to do is if someone has a laptop out and want to, wants to participate, uh, that URL up there is a short URL to our GitHub repo. Uh, and we have a, uh, under the presentation slash index.html is this presentation. And if you want to go, if someone wants to go and add their name to it or do something horrible to us so uh, it gets shown up on the big screen and we look like fools, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, and as we get to the end of this, uh, we will actually uh, demo taking that, that change through uh, to uh, production. Uh, so quickly about us, uh, my name is Paul Tchaikovsky. I am a uh, cloud engineer, systems engineer, something like that at Bluebox. I do infrastructure automation and I also spend a lot of time herding cats. All right, uh, my name is Raghavan Srinivas. I go by Rags and, uh, um, you know, essentially Paul is more on the ops side of the world and I'm more on the dev side of the world. And uh, we are both empathetic to each other, you know, so that's kind of the whole idea behind uh, doing this talk. Uh, is to kind of give, give a little bit of operator and developer perspective. I hear an echo. Does everybody do? Or? Okay, that's good. Okay. Um, so, like what Paul said, we threw in a whole lot of technologies, <laughs> you know, because it's always fun to you know play with a lot of these, right? Uh, but but actually, as we walk through these different slides, uh, you will get an idea of where we are using this and why we are using this. Um, you know, obviously, we are at OpenStack Summit, so the infrastructure as a service layer, um, you know, is built on top of OpenStack. Uh, it's on Bluebox Cloud, okay, and I'll talk about Bluebox for those of you who may not have heard of Bluebox, um, you know, in a, in a, in a bit. Um, we use Terraform for orchestration. Um, you know, we, we wanted to go with the immutable infrastructure, you know, because that's really the way to, you know, do CI, CD, right? And, and what we do is, you know, we tear down and bring up infrastructure, um, you know, on the fly. Um, and, and, you know, Terraform is really good for a lot of those things, um, you know, including, you know, the OpenStack uh, uh, clusters that we spin up, right, you know, is done using Terraform as well. There are some restrictions to Terraform, uh, in, in, uh, especially with respect to load balancing as a service, and we'll get to that in a moment that I'll talk about, okay? Uh, we use Deus. Um, you know, it's a platform as a service, and why we use Deus, uh, you know, will be apparent in a little bit. If you're, if you're uh, mainly building 12-factor apps or stateless apps, right, um, then, you know, platform as a service is great. Uh, you know, Heroku introduced this uh, concept of a 12-factor app, which essentially is a stateless app, right? Um, and, and it's very easy to scale it, very easy to... Um, you know, connect to logs, very easy to roll back versions and all that. So the platform as a service kind of provides that, and especially with Deus, uh, you know, if, if you're used to kind of the Git push or the Heroku kind of um, style, um, Deus is very, very familiar. And even if you're not, you know, it, it's pretty easy to use it as well. Um, we realized that not all applications are going to be stateless. There is some state that you know, you probably need to store. Um, for instance, you know, we, we are actually doing something with Jenkins, like adding some of the plugins and, and doing some stuff with it that actually we store it back, um, you know, in, a, in, in kind of an object store. And the object store actually is front-ended by, you know, the Docker Swarm cluster, okay? So the Docker Swarm cluster is there, and, and the back end, um, you know, we have, um, you know, a Swift-based object store, and we'll see that in a second. 
Uh, obviously, you know, no CI/CD uh, presentation is complete without at least mentioning Jenkins, right? So Jenkins is in there. Um, Docker registry, we store all the images on, on Docker registry. Actually, there are two Docker registries, you know, one, you know, associated with the Docker Swarm, and then Deus itself uses the Docker registry, okay, yeah, internally. Uh, we'll not worry about the Deus part, but, you know, we will, we will talk about the Docker registry part where we purchase some of the stuff, okay? Um, and then, um, you know, again, any, any CI, CD, you've got to have some Git repository, right? So we'll start with GitHub. And hopefully some of you have already started, uh, you know, doing a PR. Anybody already done a PR or submitted a PR or, you know, anybody interested in doing a PR or, you know, because we wanted to keep it as lively as possible given that it's almost the last day of the summit, right? Um, so, so, you know, we can uh, put the URL back up and, uh, you know, we, uh, if, if somebody can do it, that'll be great, okay? Uh, so from an architecture perspective, this is kind of how it looks. Uh, we have a three node Deus cluster and we have a three node Docker Swarm cluster. Okay, and, and essentially, again, you know, you push changes through the GitHub. Um, you know, it's exposed to the internet at, um, you know, through the, um, um, uh, you know, the DNS uh, wildcard here, you know, which is ATX 2016. I don't know if you guys can see it there. You know, probably not, but, but in any case, the idea behind behind doing that is again, like I talked before, uh, with load balance as a service, uh, you know, there are some restrictions with Terraform. So we decided to go with a, you know, with a IP that's always available and this is pointing to the DNS wildcard and thereby, you know, you can get to, you know, the dev and the staging, um, you know, clusters as required. Um, you can see here, uh, you know, that it's backed by the Swift object store. Uh, it, you know, that's really the main OpenStack thing we're using, right? And, and if you think about the architecture here, it's pretty neutral, cloud neutral. Uh, you know, you can, you can do it on, you know, some other cloud if you want, some other infrastructure if you want. And, you know, if you don't want Swift and use some other object store, that's perfectly uh, acceptable as well. Um, again, what, like I said before, Deus is for stateless apps, and the Docker Swarm cluster with a Swift backing, backing store is for stateful apps, okay? So you can use either, you can use both, uh, or you can use one, um, uh, whatever, okay? Um, so the Blue Box Cloud is private cloud as a service. Um, as you can probably you know, infer, it, it, it supports most of the OpenStack components, right? Uh, Keystone, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Swift, Heat, Elbas, V2, and I'm sure there are more, right? Uh, but we're not using all of these. Um, obviously, we're using Nova to spin up some of the clusters, right? We are using Neutron, you know, to, for the networking. Uh, we're using Swift, and obviously, we're using le uh, load balancing as a service. So you saw all that in the previous architecture diagram, okay? Um, so this is the OpenStack part of it. Moving on to how, how we bring up these clusters, you know, tear it down and all that, we use Terraform scripts. Terraform is really cool because it's, you know, no vendor lock-in, right? You know, that's one of the things that you're looking for in this kind of situation because we believe that, you know, enterprises who are doing CI, CD uh, probably going to have more infrastructure than just OpenStack, right? And, and, you know, you can actually use Terraform scripts for doing that. Uh, so it's a multi-cloud infrastructure. And one of the cool things about Terraform is that you can have your resources across different clouds. So it's, potent it's possible to have my Swift cluster, you know, somewhere else, you know, have my Docker Swarm cluster somewhere else, and, you know, have my, um, um, you know, my Deus cluster on, on AWS or something like that. You know, all of those kind of combinations are possible, uh, and Terraform makes it very easy to do. Otherwise, you'll have to do a lot of those uh, by yourself, uh, which is kind of cumbersome. How does the script look? This is a script for for essentially standing up the, um, you know, the Docker Swarm cluster, okay? And, and you'll see here, um, you know, essentially it has a name, you know, image name, flavor name, you know, things are pretty straightforward, you know, they associate with what you think they should be. Um, and, and the thing to note here is that we are actually using, um, um, you know, names that are either derived or available through the environment variables, okay? So the whole thing about the mantra about you know, your infrastructure is in your code, right? So that's kind of, um, you know, embodied here. Um, you see the security groups, uh, the floating IP and so on that essentially are derived from previous Terraform scripts, okay? So, so pretty straightforward. Um, 
and, and also Terraform you know, comes from HashiCorp. Um, you know, if any of you used Vag Vagrant or Packer, uh, you, know, you know that you know, they make some pretty cool products, okay? Uh, so let's do a very quick demo of, uh, you know, how, how this whole thing is stood up, okay? And I'm not, you know, uh, the whole idea of not doing this real time is because it, it takes some time. So what in, instead I'll do is walk you through a video, okay? And we'll see. Okay, so that's the dais. All right. So it starts off with the script, obviously, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is something called a Terraform plan, okay? And what you do in this plan is kind of walk through the script, if you will. Kind of do a sanity check, if you will, right? So it kind of walks through the script and, and, and kind of gives you an idea of how this cluster is gonna look or how this, uh, can everybody see this or? Well, oh, sure, let me do a full screen. Yeah, that might be better. Thank you. I knew I'd do that. Is that better? Okay, thank you. Um, so essentially, it kind of walks you through that and 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 tells you, you know, whether whether it 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 looks reasonable enough. Okay, and once you're satisfied with that, then what you're going to do is you're going to um, right. Come on. Okay. All right, let me. Okay, some technical difficulties here. Right. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't know if it's crashed, yeah. It's, all right, so, so let me do this. Let me go back to a quick quick time this is these are the fun parts of the uh, demo All right and I'm gonna bring up bring that up again All right so hopefully this is gonna go through now. Okay, so, so what I did here was, um, you know, I did the plan, and now I, I'm applying that particular plan, okay? So, so here you can see, uh, you know, it basically is going through the creation of the three clusters for the uh, Docker Swarm. Okay, so you'll see here zero, one, and two. Okay, so it's creating it. What is the IP, what is the image names, uh, what are the key pairs, and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so, so let's just run through this, okay? And you will see here, you know, you will see zero, one, and two, which are the, you know, the different um, Docker Swarm cluster, okay? So once we're done with this, uh, basically what happens is we're going to get a Docker host, okay? And and uh, you'll see here that you know all the Docker environment variables are available to us, okay? So so we use these Docker environment variables, you know, to essentially um, you know connect to that particular container. Um, so let's finish this up. Okay, and you'll see here there are three different, um, you know, uh, addresses. You'll see um, somewhere here, um, you know, zero, one, and two. It just kind of flew by. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, right there, zero, one, and two. Okay, and essentially it's created it, and and we're done. And the final part is the destroy, which you know um, just happened. Okay, so that's just for completion. So let me go back to my presentation. Okay, and so while, he's while he's switching screens, there uh, in, in real time, that uh, creation and destroy of the Docker Swarm takes about a minute and a half, so it's still quite quick. Uh, so it's definitely uh, doable that you could have, you know, a CI. Uh, pipeline that would actually spin up a full Docker Swarm uh, a cluster, do some tests, make sure your infrastructure is working, and then kill it again within a few minutes, uh, which is uh, it's really cool to be able to do that uh, in that sort of short amount of time. Uh, the other thing we do in Terraform, which uh, wasn't totally clear, is we actually pre-create the uh, TLS certificates 
uh, and authorization stuff so that only you can connect to uh, the Docker Swarm. So someone that port scans your, uh, your OpenStack don't, d doesn't see your Docker hosts and just start running uh, Docker on you. So you saw all this, and uh, you know we did the Terraform. Okay, so let's look at the next one, which is the Deus. Okay, everybody see this, and and yeah. Good. working with multiple screens. Yeah. And it works. That's okay. So let me go back and I'll bring that up again. All right. So so essentially, um, you know, uh, Deus, like we said, you know, is use is great for stateless apps. You know, if you have if you really don't have a whole lot whole lot of data or no data at all, um, it's it's really cool to be able to, you know, create the application, to be able to scale the application to be able to roll back a version, very straightforward, you know, what it does is it snapshots a release and, and you can use that, you know, for your subsequent, um, you know, um, uh, deployment options, okay? So pretty straightforward and that's exactly what we kind of leverage. Um, there are really three big components in Deus, you know, it's the control plane, the data plane, and the router, okay? And, and each of them are pretty obvious as to what they, as to what they do. Okay, the data plane is really where the containers are created. Okay, the control plane, you know, essentially orchestrates the, how they how they are created, and the router basically routes traffic, you know, to those containers, right? So the nice thing about this is you can you can scale the data plane independent of the control plane or the uh, you know the router mesh. So in other words, you know, if you have a hey, application that needs thousand containers, you can just you know have the data plane scale thousand times rather than you know anything else. Okay. Um, this is kind of the workflow, which, like I said, you know, if you have used Heroku, if you have used any of the other platforms as a service, might seem very familiar. Um, the idea is that you know you push some code, you know, into Git, right, and that's going to spin off some, uh, you know, a build, right, and that's going to be stored in the Docker registry. Okay, each release is going to be snapshotted, right, and and that is going to be, um, you know, it's eventually deployed. Um, and the traffic is going to be routed to that particular container, okay? And again, if you want to roll back here or you want to go to a specific version, you know, you can do that very straightforward uh, because all of those are in the Docker registry and, and, and you'll see that, you know, once, once we go live. So a very quick um, demo of this and, and what I'll do is I'll just use this um, or should I go back to, yeah. Yeah, let me go through this because this is pretty straightforward here. Can everybody see on the back? You know, I, I can I can walk through this anyway. Um, so essentially, you start off with uh, you know, Git clone, right? Uh, here's a very simple example of uh, a Docker file, um, and and the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a desk, uh, desk create, okay? And then what we're doing here is we made some changes and we pushed it to the master, okay? So that is going to start off a build, as you can see here, okay? So that's starting off a build. And, and eventually what's going to happen is, you know, it's, it's on the master, and that is snapshotted in the, in the Docker registry, okay? And you will see here, yeah. And, and essentially what you'll see here is that, you know, it's, um, yeah, let me go back. So you'll see here that, you know, if I do a curl on, on that particular uh, uh, URL, you know, you'll see that it's powered by days. And then what I did was I changed the config variable, um, you know, I config to something else. And eventually you will see that, um, you know, it, what happened was, uh, you know, the curl uh, came back with, 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 with a different command. Uh, I mean, with a different output, sorry. Okay, so you'll see here. Um, 
that it was powered by, you know, instead of days, it was powered by Paul, okay? Um, so pretty straightforward, and, and you will see, you know, how I can see the logs. You know, essentially what I do is, um, so this, this is the example of where, you know, I change the configuration. This is the logs. Uh, how do I scale? You know, pretty straightforward. All that I do is days, scale, and how many instances of that I need, okay? So pretty straightforward, and here you'll see that, you know, it, it spawned off like four instances of that, right? Um, I do the logs, and you can see in the logs at the very end that, you know, there are four instances of that particular, um, you know, container running, okay? So, so the idea is that, you know, if you have a simple stateless app, you know, you can, you can make do with, you know, with uh, a platform as a service like Deus uh, and, and really don't need any of the complex uh, infrastructure that, you know, typically you might need otherwise. So with that, let's move on to Docker Swarm and Paul, you're ready to go. Yeah, so we, we knew we would have, we, we, knew, we knew we would have some uh, stateful applications, uh, one of which being uh, Jenkins and also a Docker registry uh, in which to store that Jenkins image so we can access it from uh, other environments and keep it persisted uh, as we destroy and recreate our uh, uh, development env environments here. Uh, and the, the reason we chose Docker Swarm is for its uh, simplicity, both to, to spin up and, 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 uh, and, uh, and operate, as well as also to use. Uh, if you've used Docker, you can use Docker Swarm. The commands are all exactly the same, with just a few extra things to be able to do uh, scheduling and stuff. So you can say, run this container next to that container, or make sure this container runs on a separate host to that container. And it brings multi-host uh, container scheduling uh, to you. Uh, this, is what the, this is what it looks like uh, from an architectural point of view. Uh, usually you would have more than two hosts, uh, but this is just so it fits on the screen. So you have a load balancer sitting, sitting in front that's going to load balance the, uh, the Docker Swarm port uh, to the Swarm managers. And the Swarm managers are watching uh, service discovery. In this case, uh, that's etcd. And then we have uh, the, the Swarm agent is watching the Docker server itself, uh, using, doing some health checks, and then registering it back to etcd. So we form a sort of uh, a circle of uh, information that uh, Swarm manage can, Manager can use to determine uh, what hosts are up, what's healthy, and what containers are running on them, so that it can make intelligent decisions about where to route uh, the call to run a particular uh, Docker container that uh, you asked for. We're also running the Docker registry. So we actually run this uh, listening only to local host on each of the Docker Swarm nodes. Uh, and we have our, the storage for it backed by Swift. And the reason we do that is so that we don't have to secure the front end of it. We don't need to add SSL. We don't need to add usernames or passwords because it's only local host listening for it. So uh, the only way to get to it is being on that local host, which means you're already a trusted user. Uh, and we saw our, our Jenkins image uh, and a couple of other things in there. Uh, and the reason we do that is uh, Jenkins, configuring Jenkins can be really hard to automate. Uh, and so what we ended up doing is we took the, the Jenkins image from the Docker registry, uh, we, we started it, and then we went to the Jenkins UI and we added, say, the GitHub pull request builder plugin and a few other, a few other plugins, uh, and also added the Deus CLI and stuff. And then we committed that using the Docker commit and pushed it up to our, our registry, which backed by Swift now meant that we can destroy this whole environment, bring it up uh, again uh, later, and our, uh, our state persisted in, inside of Swift. Uh, this is, uh, so we have four jobs in, in Jenkins uh, to do the actual work for our workflow. Uh, this is an example script uh, for the one that's going to deploy our dev environment. You can see it's, it's really simple. We're simply grabbing the pull request ID and turning that into our Deus app name, and then we're doing a, a de deploy. So we do the Deus create, uh, and if that fails, uh, we know it's because it already exists, so we're just adding the remote and doing the push. And that way, uh, on a pull request, it will spin up a dev environment, if someone updates that pull request, it will simply update that, uh, that environment rather than trying to destroy it and recreate it. And then this is our application itself. Uh, it is this presentation, so it's a pretty simple HTML-based uh, presentation tool uh, called reveal.js. And so all we really needed is something that, would, that could host a HTML page. Uh, so we use Caddy, which is a fairly small Golang-based uh, web server, and we just added our local directory to it and told Caddy where to find our uh, HTML file. Uh, and then this is the, probably the, the important bit. This is our actual development workflow. You can see there's three actors here. There's, a, there's the humans that are actually doing the dev work, GitHub, Jenkins, and Deus. So a quick walkthrough. 
uh, the developer will be working on, a, on some new code, and they'll push a feature branch up to GitHub. And GitHub will, and, and then they will create a pull request in GitHub. And that kicks off a, 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 a webhook to Jenkins and says, there's a new pull request. And Jenkins goes, great, I'm gonna run tests, and then I'm gonna deploy it. Now, we, we, our tests here are a no-op because it's a pretty basic HTML page, but realistically, you'd be wanting to run some linting, unit tests, and that sort of stuff. And if they're successful, it does the deploy, uh, which creates a, uh, our application uh, named for the, the pull request it is. And then it passes that, the URL to that application and the test results back to uh, GitHub so that anyone reviewing it can then uh, see the output. So then the reviewer comes along and they review it, they see the code looks fine, pa uh, tests passed, and they go to the, the URL and they see the actual presentation up there and it looks good. So they then merge that pull request to the develop branch. And the develop branch in this case is our, basically our staging environment. So when that, uh, when that merge happens, we, we kick off two tasks in Jenkins. The first is to destroy the dev environment. It's no longer needed because it's been tested. And then the second is to actually update our staging environment. Uh, and so it also, it, at each stage, it runs tests, which, as I said, are no op for this. Uh, so it deploys up to our staging environment, and then that way you can go to the staging environment and look at your changes and anyone else's changes that were, that were uh, pre-staged. So it may contain other people's work as well. And then so instead of then a release manager or someone acting in that sort of role will come along and say, okay, it's time to push these features up to production. So they will again go to, go to GitHub and they will take the develop branch and they will merge that into the master branch. And the master branch is basically our, our production environment. So GitHub will again send a, a uh, webhook through to uh, Jenkins, which is gonna run your tests one final time uh, and then deploy out to production, which uh, is, a, is, a, is, an, is, is cutting a new release of your application using Deus and pushing it out. And the nice thing is you can have multiple dev uh, environments, right? That's and right. So sure. there will be an active dev environment for every pull request that's currently open. Uh, and now I'm just going to quickly change laptops and I hope everything survives. <laughs> All right, so this is our Git repo here. Um, I have a pull request I made in case uh, we didn't get any errors. Oh, we have a bunch. All, all right. right. All right, we gotta decide now, huh? Which yeah. one? Let's look at this top one here. Okay. So we can do some review here, right? We can see there's one commit, and there's some changed files, and we're changing, uh, there we go. So we're changing the blue box there. So if we click across to Jenkins itself, you want to go look at the other pull requests, or no. just go with this? Okay, go with this one. All right. So, where am I? Let's see what this. Let me take it off full screen. It's not showing the whole thing. You can do this. See here. Let me refresh. Okay, it hasn't done them all. There must be a, a queue or something happening. We haven't merged it. But right? We do have. We do have this one. Uh, so let's look at. All right. So we have some changes there. <laughs> All right. So this is basically the Jenkins job has run uh, and it's deployed and it's created a, a URL we can click on. Uh, and then so if we switch across, so we have uh, Bodie McBoatface is now uh, a uh, presenter and our HTMI is going wonky. 
I think it's Gordy McFace that crossed the HD right? <laughs> Wow. Gas screen gun crazy? I'm trying to figure it out, yeah. Okay, so here's this Buddy McFace one. Uh, and so we're going to merge that. Yeah, it, it's happening. There it is. And so that's merged into uh, our development branch. Uh, so if we come back to Jenkins. So you can Start see we've got a new job there, which is uh, deploy to staging. So let's click on that and see what it's doing. So you can see it's, uh, it's uh, updating our uh, staging application. Uh, and so this is da Deus uh, basically showing back output that it's uh, currently doing a build uh, inside itself, and then it will show itself shortly, pushing it up to the uh, registry. This was much faster earlier when we, when we tested it. All right. Murphy's law, right? So what, it, what it's doing is behind the scenes, it's talking to the Deus control plane. Uh, Deus saw, uh, basically it did, does a git push and Deus has a git server that has a bunch of uh, post commit hooks that goes and looks at the git repo itself. It sees there's a Docker file in that git repo. So it goes, okay, I know how to build a Docker file. I, I will build it and then deploy it. Uh, so it, it did the build and now it's pushing it to its private registry before it then will uh, update the, uh, the staging application. All right, okay, so it's successful. So if we come across to our staging environment here and we refresh it and we come across to this, let me just give it a second. Is it gonna, oh, that's actually our production, I went too far. Right. Here's staging. There you so go. there we go, we can see our new presenter there. Uh, and then we, we then uh, would merge that into uh, master, which would kick off another build, and we would then see it in production. Given that it just took like five minutes to run through, we probably don't want to run through again and waste a bunch of time. Uh, so with that, uh, I think we can pretty much uh, call, it a, call it a presentation uh, and uh, answer any questions if we have any. You want to put the links up? Oh yeah, we do have yeah. a, a bunch of links, uh, both through the slides and also here, and we'll probably update it uh, uh, w with some more stuff uh, going forward. And everything we have done is up in that Git repo, all of our Terraform uh, configs and everything. So if you want to look at all the underlying work that we did, it, it, it's all in that uh, repo uh, along with the presentation. Uh, questions? If you want to come to the mic, that'll be great. I appreciate it. I have a question about uh, Deus. Is it intended as a single tenant or a multi tenant? application it, it, it is multi-tenant yeah uh, I'm not sure you would want to use multiple tenants from like disparate companies uh, because it, it's still running in docker right so you still have the do I really want docker to be multi-tenant but it, you definitely like you register users and each user gets their own password and pushes their SSH keys to it and can do deploys through git and stuff excellent thank you any more questions we still have some time All right. Call Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you very much.